Basic facts, the kind of things that you could put on a flashcard, are kind of funny things. On the one hand, they're easy to remember, but on the other, they're easy to forget. And if you're in some classroom like this, you're probably going to be bombarded with all kinds of different facts. It's not that facts are necessarily the most important thing about education, in fact, they probably aren't. Things like a deep conceptual understanding, ability to reason through stuff, ability to apply what you've learned in new scenarios, those are all incredibly important. But facts create a sort of foundation. These are the basic nodes where our webs of understanding and application are built out of. So we need to know facts. But the problem is that most of us are not very conscious about how we're going to learn facts. We might take some period of time, like right before a midterm, where we study a whole bunch of facts and we get good at them at that particular time. But beyond that, most of us just remember the facts we remember and don't spend a lot of conscious effort learning facts for the long term. Now, in this video, I want to tell you a little bit about cognitive psychology, which gives us some tips. It tells us an effective way to be able to learn things, not just for a midterm, which is important, but more importantly, to remember them long term, so that even years from now, even decades from now, that you remember the same facts. The technique that we're going to use to do this is called spaced retrieval practice. The idea is this. Suppose I tell you to remember the number, I don't know, 317. Because I just told it to you, you remember that I just said 317. Your memory of it is very high, but as time goes on, it's going to attenuate, and it's going to attenuate pretty quickly. You might not remember at the end of this video, you might not remember in a week from now. So how do you get over the fact that all facts that we learn that come into us have this attenuation time? Well, the trick is spaced retrieval. We're going to learn a fact, it's going to go down, it's going to attenuate. We're going to relearn it, we're going to practice recollecting it. If we can practice recollecting it, that brings it out of our long-term memory into our short-term memory. That's the muscle we're trying to practice. Then it attenuates, and then we practice again, and then it attenuates, and then we practice again, and then it attenuates. But the key is this. The more you go through that cycle of practicing, of trying to recollect a fact, of being exposed to it over the time, the less you have to do it. Right away, you might need to be reminded about that 317 number pretty quickly in order to remember it. But as time goes on, if you keep on recollecting 317 and you think about it over and over again, the gap before you forget it gets longer and longer and longer. So as time goes on, you need to be reminded about it less and less often. However, there's a bit of an efficiency problem here, because if you have to remember a very large number of facts, you want to remember them for a long period of time, you want to space out your repetitive practice of them, how do you sort of just logistically manage it all? And that's where software can play a role. The system that I've just started using is called Anki. And Anki is an open source, it's free, I'm not associated with it in any way, it's available on all sorts of different platforms. But the idea is this, it's flashcards with a little bit of magic. So the flashcard part is just what you think. There's a front side, there's a back side. You can ask any question on the front side. You can put any answer on the back side. But the key of it is that when you want to study some facts, it's going to show you those facts with spaced retrieval built in. For example, if you look at a fact and it's easy for you, and you rate it as being easy, the system's not going to show it to you for quite some time. If you do the fact that it's hard for you, it's going to show it to you much more frequently. So if you do a little bit of this Anki studying every day or every couple of days, that quickly you're going to find that the facts that are easy are going to have really, really long repetition times. It might be more than a year before you see the fact again. But if a fact is really difficult for you, you're going to see it all the time until it becomes easy. So I actually found out about Anki by a guy called Michael Nielsen on Twitter. And for him, he memorized 9,000 facts using the Anki system. And for him, it takes about approximately five minutes on average to remember something over years. Why only five minutes? Because it's five minutes spaced out over time. It's maybe a little bit of time to enter it in the system, then it's like eight seconds here, eight seconds there, eight seconds there. As it spreads out, you just do a little bit of practice every once in a while, and it adds up to a relatively small amount of time per fact, but now you have this really long-term retention of it. And the part that I take away from this is that this makes memory a choice. It doesn't depend on just the circumstance of whether you were exposed to something multiple times in a row, whether you just happen to remember it because it was well connected to other facts. It means that you can choose the facts you think are important enough that you're willing to spend five minutes per fact over the course of the next several years so that you can remember it in the long term.
So I wanted to try this out, and I'm kind of funny. I'm a Canadian, I've got a driver's license in Canada, here I am in the United States, I actually have to go and get a driver's license. I feel like I'm 16 years old again. I have to pass a driver's license knowledge test. But because I think in kilometers per hour and meters as opposed to miles per hour and feet, I don't know a lot of facts about US driving. I don't know how many feet you're supposed to be able to park behind a fire hydrant or behind a stop sign or anything like that. So I had to study a little bit and I used Anki. So what I basically did was I went on the phone version at Anki web and I put in a bunch of flashcards of flipping through the driver's manual. I just entered them into the system. And then over the course of the last couple of days, I've gone on for almost no time at all. And I've gone through the flashcards. So for example, I can ask how many feet behind a fire hydrant should I park? I think the answer is 10 feet because I just looking into this, that's pretty easy for me, it's correct. I can say I don't need to see it for quite some time now. Well, hopefully this system is gonna work out for me. So I'm gonna go take the driver's test. Let's see how I do. All right, we're here, but I don't know. I'm kind of nervous about this. I guess we have to see whether the Anki system has actually worked because I haven't spent a lot of time doing this. All right, the good news is I was able to pass, so I guess the Anki system did something. Now, the point I want to make is this is maybe an effective way to not spend a ton of time, but to pass a particular test, a test that was had to be done today. But these are not all that important. I don't really care to keep knowing these. I could delete these cards. What is important is all those things that I would like to know for years and years on end. And even a couple of these driving rules ones I think would be good things to keep on the list. But there's all sorts of other technical information that would be useful to me that I want to know for the long term. And that's where I think that the Anki system shines.